Colleen Ballinger has actually properly responded to everything going on about her right now. And this time, it's not with a ukulele. So, um... Count your lucky stars on that one. Now, when I say Colleen Ballinger has responded, it's actually incredibly more cowardly than that. Her lawyers have responded. Now, apparently, by the way, um, there's something to do with a connection with the lawyers and Prince Andrew. I'm not exactly sure who the lawyer team she's hired is, but um, if there's any form of link there, that's probably not a good thing. Next thing she'll be saying that she's not able to sweat, and therefore that means everything can't possibly be true. How the Miranda Singh slash Colleen Ballinger scandal went off the rails. Yeah, that's a good start. So this article is already basically being like, wow, it's gone too far. So let's see what they have to say. Let's see what Colleen's lawyers have written in defense of her. So we've got like the standard uh, kind of puff piece stuff where it's like Colleen Ballinger has been a YouTube star for more than a decade amassing tens of millions of followers to there she's famous and cool. Many of whom found her way when they were teenagers or even younger. They fell hard for a potty comedy and specifically her fictional alter ego, Miranda Sings. A talentless adolescent who delusionally believes she can sing. Yeah, just like the real Colleen who decided to do it for her apology video. The persona resonated with outcast kids who found a desperate desire for fame to be oh so accurately cringe. Such success earned Ballinger a Netflix series, sold out live shows, and most recently, rapidly intensifying controversy. Yeah, if you've watched any of those shows, which we actually did on my main channel, so go ahead and watch those on the I'm Alex YouTube channel right now, you know that all of them are incredibly creepy and weirdly centered around sexualizing children for some reason. I don't know why, but even the books are like that. Oh, and that reminds me, if you haven't checked out the main channel and you're subscribed to this channel, make sure you still subscribe to this channel and the main channel because YouTube's been unsubscribing people lately and it's getting on my bloody nerves. So make sure that's not you. Last month, Rolling Stone published a story alleging that Ballinger had engaged in inappropriate behavior with underage fans. The magazine verified screenshots of texts in which Ballinger asked a minor about their virginity status and their favorite sexual position. I, I don't know how they're gonna uh, like defend her on this one, but uh, let's see. She asked them to send pictures of their body. Wow. However inappropriate her alleged behavior was, the article clarified that no sexual crime had been committed. Well, it's fine then. <laughs> Who cares? Move on. Nothing to see here, guys. Don't worry, I know she asked um, people who are teenagers their favourite sexual position and asked them to send pictures of their body, but um, no crime's been committed apparently, so uh, everybody, just to leave her alone. <laughs> to those steeped in the world of YouTube fandom, a chaotic shape-shifting minefield where allegiances are fortified and swapped by the hour, many of these claims were not new. Ballinger had already responded to some of them, on YouTube of course. Rolling Stone's piece was tame, legally sound one could argue, compared to the language and rumours that have been flying around her for years. I mean, you basically said that she did do those things and the texts were verified, so what are you trying to get at here? Ballinger will be accused of everything from performing as Beyonce uh, in blackface, that's a, that's a cracking line, um, to texting a sex worker's nude photo to a minor. Yeah, I, I don't know, I, I, I feel like, you know, out of the two things, what do you think they're going to respond to, their legal team? Ballinger's legal team has denied she performed in blackface, saying she was wearing green face paint for a prior cover of a song from Wicked. Yeah, okay, but what about the texting a sex worker's nude photo to a minor? What do they have to say about that? Apparently, nothing. The reality of some of these claims, and in turn the broader narrative around Ballinger, remains murky. Various allegations remain unverified, left to endlessly circulate as they fall under that ever-expanding umbrella of inappropriate behaviour. Hang on. Are they trying to say that, like, because 50% of them haven't been verified, that just means that the ones that have been verified must be ignored? This article is very weird. They've literally verified texts in the first half of the article and then gone on to go, yeah, but not all of them you may see are possibly true. I guess that means that she's not as bad, like she may not have done it as much, but I'd hazard a guess that if the first half of them have been verified, then why are the other ones not verified? What, what are the allegations that remain unverified? Because the ones that have been seem pretty awful to me. You could be forgiven if you were one of the millions who back in the summer of 2020 allied some COVID anxiety by diving into the YouTube drama unfolding between Ballinger and her former fan Adam McIntyre. What do you mean I could be forgiven? I, oh, I mean, I wasn't involved in that. I didn't make videos on this back in 2020. I wasn't really aware of it going on. But the idea that, like, if you took part in this kind of gossip train 
that you are somehow somebody who should be forgiven compared to the person who has verified text messages where they ask minors like to send pictures of themselves after like asking them about their virginity. It seems like the person who needs to be forgiven here isn't me, the viewer, who is confused and blown away by all of this, but maybe the perpetrator, Colleen Ballinger. Very odd. He was an aspiring influencer himself, making sweet, low stakes YouTube content about his life. I love that, as if like they're setting him up to be like some form of like turned clout chaser. Oh, this is awful. In it, McIntyre told several seemingly unrelated stories. One recounted the time Ballinger sent him lingerie in the mail to his mother's horror. The lingerie was new and unworn, and Ballinger has since apologised for sending it. Oh, well, that makes it okay then. Another was intended to debunk the rumour that he was secretly behind some anti-Miranda Singh social media accounts, and Ballinger had gotten wind of them. A third concerned the fallout of a tweet that Ballinger allowed McIntyre to post as Miranda Singh's from the character's Twitter account, but led him to never posting on her behalf again. He'd been considered her social media intern, he said, with hopes of being employed by her one day in that capacity. Bally just says he only had access to her account for one day, and that if all went well, she had planned to hire him formally. Yeah, that's a weird thing to do, though, to a teenager who you've been, like, asking weird messages and sending pictures of, like, Trisha Paytas naked to. Why are you doing that to a fan? Hire an actual social media intern. It wouldn't surprise me if the lawyers who are defending her are also teenagers. It might sound strange to hear that Ballinger had put a fan in charge of her character's Twitter to begin with, but that access went in line with her public image. Ballinger was closely aligned with her most devoted, in brackets, young viewers. For her to remove that access, as McIntyre experienced, felt painful. Yeah, okay, no YouTuber should be closely aligned with their most devoted young fans. Um, you should be glad that they watch your stuff, maybe, depending on what you make. Um, but even then, if you feel like your stuff's inappropriate, actually kind of involving yourself with the younger fans is weirder. Like, if I found that, like, a nine-year-old was watching my videos, I wouldn't go, oh, let's follow each other on Twitter, and, like, I'll keep on encourage it. I'm going to encourage this behavior. No, I'd ignore them completely, because I'd be like, I don't want to encourage, like, children to watch stuff that may potentially be inappropriate to them to watch, right? It's weirder that Colleen did all of this stuff about, like, her uncle laying on her in her book, and she, like, brought fans up on stage and, like, got them to put their hands in her pants and then decided to have close relationships with them. That, that's not part of the public image. That's weird. Everybody finds this weird. Nobody thinks this is normal behaviour. Ballinger, 33, at the time of her response to a teenager, posted a classic apology vlog. She revealed screenshots of Instagram DMs she sent to McIntyre and one that McIntyre's mother had purportedly sent her, which seemed to be Ballinger's way of assuring viewers of what really happened. A strategy not unlike McIntyre's. In a DM, she accuses him of going too far, supposedly in response to him asking her to imagine her newborn son being taken advantage of in the same way he felt he had been. Well, it's valid. Just be like, would you want your son to be watching the content you've made, to be reading the book you've made? And would you want your son to be at the age of like 13, 14, having a 33 year old celebrity send them pictures of naked adult women? The answer would be no. McIntyre and another former fan have also alleged Ballinger sent them nude photos from a sex worker posting unverified, if troubling, text messages as proof. Well, I mean, I don't understand what they mean by unverified. I'm pretty sure everybody universally believes them to be real. Um, I don't know why he'd make that up. Yeah, she spoke to Trisha Paytas about it, so I'm pretty sure they are verified now. Trisha seems to believe they're real, and she's the person involved. So if she thinks they're real, I think that's personally probably good enough. And she's actually spoken to Colleen, who sent her the apology as a way of saying sorry. So, nice one, Vanity Fair. After Ballinger posted a ukulele video, McIntyre posted a reaction on Twitch. He was incredulous that Ballinger hadn't apologised to him in private. A reminder, perhaps, that their relationship had reached a turning point years earlier when he sent out a tweet that briefly got Miranda Sings cancelled. Yeah, well that tweet is nothing to the actions that she took towards this young boy at the time. She literally manipulated him and was incredibly weird with somebody who was in fact a minor. Speaking sexually to them in any way is literally inexcusable. It's incredibly odd. And the fact that they've gone, maybe he's upset that he can't manage the Miranda Sings Twitter account. That's why. Well, all of these texts are verified. Everything is real. So even if that is the reason that he turned on her, well, he woke up. He realized that he was being taken advantage of. He realized that this woman was being incredibly weird to him. 
You can't really get on his back about that. That's just absolutely insane. This article is crazy, and the fact that her lawyers have had like personal involvement in this makes me believe that maybe they potentially paid for it. She hired like a really expensive law firm, I'm pretty sure, to like kind of get her back on this. She's not doing any more responses, I don't think. I mean, if you're her lawyer, you'd be begging her not to. Put the fucking piano away. Get rid of the xylophone. Get rid of the face paint, Miranda. We don't need another one of those. Don't do it in the form of a wicked musical. But when you read the tone of this article, it's quite clear that they're trying to be like, is it really that bad? Is it, I don't know. Is this a problem? I, it's absolutely insane to me that they have written this and published it and thought that this was a good idea. Nobody believes that, you know, what she did is right. And trying to kind of assassinate Adam McIntyre's character, yeah, maybe he's a young miffed fan who's upset that his idol was shitty to him. But his idol was shitty to him, so who literally gives a fuck if he's doing it for revenge? I don't care. I don't care if he's doing it purely for all the wrong reasons, because she's mental. This is bad. She shouldn't have done it. And that's the thing that always blows my mind. I see YouTubers get outed for stuff a lot. And one of the funny things is I always go, it seemed like the person only did it for clout. And it's like, well, why did you message this stuff to a minor, you freak? If, if they didn't have anything on you, then they just say that you're a dickhead or something. But the fact that they're like, oh, they've outed me for being like sexual towards a minor because they might be upset at me. As if that's like some form of defense. Oh, they're clout chasing. Who cares? What the fuck were you doing? It's mad. She paid lawyers to kind of go over this article and deny two things that were completely irrelevant um, and just ignore everything else, which is fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm hoping she does do a proper response. I, I really do, because I think what's crazy to me is it does seem like that she doesn't really think that she did anything wrong. And the tone of this article that's for some reason written in favor of her, God knows why, seems to back that. But this is as good of a response as we've got so far. Um, if there's more stuff going on in this, I'll keep on covering it. Uh, but for now, I think this is the last thing until Colleen makes a response. I don't know if there's a bigger development, I'll make a video on it. Um, a lot of people, uh, have been, uh, watching these videos and, and, and seem to appreciate the covering of them. So if you guys want me to carry on doing it, then I will do so. Uh, I'm back on the daily uploads now, I'm back from holiday. Uh, also, these hoodies are coming out soon. So if you want the Acid Watch Internet Sensation hoodie, save your money. Okay, because they're going to be out soon, and uh, yeah, they're, they're very high quality, uh, and they cost a lot to make, and the new website is currently being built, that's why it isn't available right now. But I thought I'd let you guys know that. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys soon. This article is disgraceful. Bye!